Well, to discuss that a little further, I'm joined uh, from New York by Kevin Sanders, who's the director of the War and Peace Foundation. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, among the responsibilities of the foreign forces in Afghanistan is to protect the civilian population, not kill them. But they have killed and seem to have gotten away with it. Well, I don't know that, uh, that they have yet. I'm sure we haven't heard the end of this, and I, I don't believe that we should. Um, it isn't entirely surprising that this has been the response of the American government, or certainly the Bush administration. They probably would hope that the whole story can be smothered somehow with the election coming up, with the uh, war, or wars, uh, plural, in the Middle East, already um, becoming ever more unpopular and uh, people tending to confuse Iraq, Iran, the whole war scene in the Middle East is now held in disrepute. It's now seen as, as a mistake, even Afghanistan, and this will, will heighten that perception. Um, but um, I, I think that there is a very powerful case to be made here. I think that a very eloquent and moving presentation was made to the, uh, the government of Afghanistan to take a stronger stand on this against the United States. And um, I think that that document would serve as a very good beginning for any case that has actually moved um, either to the World Court or to the International Criminal Court. That is, uh, that or some other international body should be called in to take action here. And it is interesting and I think very important and revealing that the United Nations has spoken of what for the United Nations is quite firmly um, to regret that this decision has been made. And uh, above a, a, another point, of course, is that if it goes to the World Court or the Criminal Court, they would be in a position, I think, credibly to demand that the 1,200 pages of evidence in this hearing, which are currently withheld, be made available as a beginning. How about the trust of the Afghan people in the international forces there? Doesn't that matter? Oh, it, it does, and I think um, it is eroding further and I think it underlines the, the inherent absurdity of uh, something like NATO, and it's now supposedly a NATO war, though it's dominated and led by America, that um, NATO and the whole concept and structure of NATO is designed to fight the armies of the now defunct Soviet Union. It's not designed to deal with the kind of problems that they're dealing with in Afghanistan, and further to which they shouldn't even be in Afghanistan. Afghanistan was not responsible for 9-11. Um, Afghanistan didn't bring armies to bear on this. This was not a war. 9-11 was a crime and should have been dealt with as a crime with the international criminal and intelligence organizations working harmoniously in coherence to track down terrorists, not to go to war against a nation. And uh, so the whole concept of this is at fault. And, and these sorts of things, these kinds of problems of, an, of a military force that is completely out of place, uh, soldiers who have no idea of even where they are, probably can't find where, where they are on a map even to this day, um, fighting a war they don't understand, that is losing support at home, uh, and, and using immensely powerful weapons with insufficient training, overworked, probably passable, possibly panicking, uh, possibly um, um, caught up in some kind of uh, inexperienced accident or mistake. And this sort of thing is going to happen so long as the American, massive American presence continues in the Middle East. Well, uh, if such actions and incidents continue to happen uh, for a long time, what is that going to tell us about the U.S. military? Is it going to tell us that the U.S. military is not taking any responsibility for the killing for killing civilians and how is that going to bring down to break down the image of the US even further well it, it, it's a, a terrible position that uh, the, the Americans find themselves in that they have put themselves in with this absurd war and the way it's being conducted uh, the the wrong-headed structure and assumption of the whole enterprise the whole military enterprise uh, not just in Iraq but in Afghanistan and so um, I think that the, the, the influence that America hopes to bring to bear on Afghanistan will be weakened. The only reason they're going to cling on, I suspect, is because of the geopolitics of war and, and gas pipelines that they want to build in Afghanistan. They wanted to go into Afghanistan and, and claim control or seize control or occupy. 
even before the Bush administration came into power. And um, so um, it, it's difficult to see how and when they're going to pull out. But the, the, uh, the new administration is going to face some very serious problems, and one of them will be, I suspect, uh, to find a way back and out from Afghanistan. And indeed, it may eventually involve um, admission of some of the terrible problems, not atrocities of policy, but atrocities of error, exhaustion, all sorts of things that can go wrong, that, go, that can, can have tremendous rapid global implications. Um, this situation is, is a warning to the sort of problems that are going to continue, and I think it will, in the long term, hasten the withdrawal, the, the departure of the United States from the Middle East, including Afghanistan, and um, if it goes to the world court, it may bring world law to bear. Doesn't mean it will make a change, but it would be, I think, helpful to raise the consciousness of uh, all participants and indeed the world. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin Sanders, director of the War and Peace Foundation in New York. Thank you very much.